the International Space Station is uh, it's like going home for the astronauts. So in order to get to the station, you have uh, different type of vehicles. Um, I flew twice on the Soyuz, Russian Soyuz, flew once on the shuttle. And uh, now there is Crew Dragon that is uh, Elon Musk SpaceX. They are similar, um, so you do training, a long training. Eventually, finally, you arrive, um, the day, the day arrives and uh, you climb on this 55 meter tall that Soyuz or 100 meter that was a shuttle stack and then you get ready to launch. Countdown and then going to zero, engines start. That is about eight, nine minutes. That is a continuous acceleration. So you go from um, zero to 27,000 kilometers per hour from the surface of the planet to space, about nine minutes. Then you are in space and then everything stops, the engines stop and suddenly you perceive that you are no longer sitting on your chair, but you are sitting on your uh, belt, safety belts. You look around and you see items that float. You are in microgravity. The first time it's a bit strange. You feel your face warm and uh, it is like, um, it's somehow similar when on the ground you do the vertical fit up. Uh, blood is going to your face, it is severe. And that's only the beginning. After that you unstrap and you start to interact with uh, the lack of weight, microgravity. And that's inside a capsule like Soyuz or shuttle. Then you dock to the station, the astronauts open the edge, go from the spaceship to the space station and that is a completely different because the space are much larger, bigger and at that point for the first time your brain is capable to best uh, face the challenge to work three-dimensionally. When you are on board of uh, a spaceship or when you are on board of the space station, the most difficult part of the daily life is when you want to relax. So you have uh, your program from 8 o'clock London time. I don't know why they decide to go by London time, but that's the way they do it. And then you have your lunch break. And then at a certain point, you have dinner, obviously. 10 o'clock, um, the commander, station commander, is sh shutting off the lights and then you are supposed to relax. That's when, for the first time during the day, you feel yourself. When you have to chase your schedule because you have a very tight schedule, experiments, sport, um, and video conferences, so you, when you are your adrenaline is, is, uh, is, is, is burning in order to keep up with a very tight schedule. You don't perceive yourself, you just try to complete the task. Then, when you are alone with your, yourself, you perceive the strangeness of the effect of the microgravity on your brain, on your body, that is not pleasant because we are humans <laughs> and uh, just as an example at the end of the day we go to bed and when we lay down there is a discontinuity between the body moving around during the day and when you finally lay down and relax in space there is no difference because you float during the day you float during the night so your spine starts to complain and say, well, I am unhappy because I need to have uh, some discontinuity. So you try to come up with uh, some special treats.
for example, you can use uh, plastic bands to strap yourself somewhere and try to reproduce the effect of gravity or you come up with uh, other techniques but uh, yes, the most challenging part of the day is when you, are, you will be supposed to relax. I flew three times and uh, um, flying in space, it is very strange. It is strange because it's a, a mix between anticipation of the mission itself and surprise for space not being pleasant as you would expect. Oh, by the way, space tourism does not exist, would never exist. So why? Why going outside the atmosphere? Why spending money? That's the key question for space. There is an easy answer um, that you can try to communicate with words, for example, the, the, what I use as, an, as, a, as a concept is uh, the future of Earth is linked to space. In what sense? Resources. So now we are destroying the ecosystem, trying to find more um, fuel that we need uh, in order to have our economy to continue to grow. That's the wrong concept. We are on the wrong track. The only way out, the only sustainable way to permit the continuous growth of the economy is getting the atmosphere, getting the resources outside the atmosphere. So I go on the, on the moon, I extract what I need and take it back. That is, for the future of the ecosystem, what is the correlation between this and flying space? The, the link is what you see once you are outside. So you see the planet, it's beautiful, yes. However, you also see that uh, the resources are, that the earth is big, but uh, it, it's, you see from outside. It, the resources are, are not inf infinite and not only that if you look well the atmosphere appears like a tiny tiny um, tiny strip that uh, embraces the planet uh, and you can see the global effect of pollution so that is uh, a huge motivation that you take with you and think about the future of the planet for yourself, your family and future generation. This is something for sure that uh, has changed my motivation in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in trying to give a contribution to the future. Space will be more competition or cooperation. Um, I think we have good news and bad news. The International Space Station has been defined as the most successful international cooperation program ever achieved. The International Space Station was capable to bring together the former Soviet Union and the US plus us. Still today, the, the, the International Space Station is a place where Russia works together with the US, still today. So, it is cooperation, yes, however, now we need to focus on the resources. The resource is a totally different chapter. The resource is a totally different concept. So there will be competition, but there will be a positive competition because the best will win, the most innovative idea will win, the one that will be able to change our future will win. Will be competition, but will be a positive competition.